Um, I think, okay, the anti coup movement is, is people who are simply against military regimes taking over democratically elected leaders or, or governments, to be quite frank. It doesn't need much explanation. Um, it's people who, are, who believe in the democracy, who believe in that is the way to go about um, changing um, or to go away, the, the way of governing a country. And uh, people who believe that even if the people in government are not the best of politicians or not the best of people who can implement and execute all these lovely ideas that we talk about, um, the only way to get rid of them is through the box. It's quite simple. It's, 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 not, it's not science. It's not, I don't know what's, what happened since then that all of a sudden military coup or the definition of coup has sort of become this complicated uh, idea which needs a lot of theory and it needs a lot of studying. It's quite simple. It's people who are against militaries taking over democratically elected leaders. That was it. So the anti-coup mobilization uh, begins... Uh, really on the 28th of June 2013, with a kind of counter-mobilization by uh, the Muslim Brothers in, uh, in Nasser City in, in northeast Cairo, in anticipation of large anti-Muslim uh, Brother and anti Mohammed Morsi street protests uh, scheduled for the 30th of June um, and called for by the Tamarad movement. Um, these protests have then continued uh, since for, after the, the 3rd of July uh, coup, um, there have been daily protests across the country, um, not just in Cairo and Giza and, and, and Alexandria, the three big cities, but actually in uh, many governorates in the Nile Delta, like uh, Sharia, like Kafr al-Sheikh, like uh, Ali Abeya and Nagarbeya, and also in Upper Egypt, in Asyut, uh, in Aswan uh, and elsewhere. Um, and these uh, protests uh, draw on uh, both men and women, um, uh, there is a very important role played by the Muslim Brothers in organizing these protests. Um, but also we see uh, new constituencies, uh, often young, uh, often fairly pious students uh, in university campuses who may not be affiliated with the Muslim Brothers, um, who are now organizing in fairly horizontal, uh, informal movements like Students Against the Coup uh, and Youth Against the Coup, uh, groups like uh, Sabah Sub, um, who specialize in very early morning protests, um, and all of these groups have quite a kind of unique uh, corporate identity um, and a kind of a repertoire um, that they have kind of uh, taken as their own. Well, the Brotherhood uh, is a, I mean, there are many things. I mean, they wear many hats. I mean, they're a nationalist movement that, you know, helped fight against the British occupation in the 1940s and early 50s. Uh, they participated uh, in the 2011 nationalist revolution against the Mubarak dictatorship. Um, but they're also an Islamist movement. They're really the founders of modern political Islam, and they've influenced a lot of Islamists across the world. Many of the scholars who study the Brotherhood um, say that the Brotherhood is a moderate Islamist group. So it just didn't make sense, and I don't think it makes sense to continue to kind of hold the Brotherhood up next to the Sharia as sort of as some kind of a uh, you know, some kind of a boogeyman when really the entire society, or virtually the entire society, is on board with Sharia, right? So, um, again, Egypt is a very conservative society. It's not necessarily something that all Westerners are going to understand or agree with, but I, I think they have to probably come to grips with it. The Egyptian military is far from a secular organization. They, they produced a new constitution, and they, they kept the Sharia in that constitution. Uh, they've continued to use religious jargon, religious imagery, and implement aspects of Islamic law. Um, so, uh, in fact, in many ways, they've claimed to be sort of better Muslims than the Muslim Brotherhood. I believe in an article you wrote, you also uh, you gave the example of a, a, a Muslim scholar who actually pronounced uh, a fatwa uh, calling the Muslim Brotherhood heretics. Do you want to go over, do, do you want to mention any more details about yeah. that? Yeah, one of the, he's actually one of the most famous scholars in Egypt. Uh, he's an authoritative figure, his name is Ali Goma. Uh, he's the former uh, Mufti of Egypt. And he uh, gave a long speech, actually to the military. I mean, it was a speech given 
two members of the military, and Abdel Fattah al-Sisi was present. And in that speech, he calls the Brotherhood Khawarij. Uh, the Khawarij are, are, are heretics who essentially went beyond um, you know, traditional Islam. Um, there's a lot of negative literature about uh, the, the, the Khawarij. Um, and Ali Guma goes on to suggest that it's okay to sort of to kill uh, the the Khawarij. In, in sort of summary, would you say it's fair to consider the Muslim Brotherhood in the Egyptian context centrists on social issues? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that's a fair statement.